Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Try and set the stage for what should be a great year of NFL action. There's a handful of teams that potentially can compete for a Super Bowl championship. Confusion and uncertainty this year more than some in the past. This team looks like it's ready to make a move, but we just don't know if it's bad or good this year. J.J. McCarthy is eventually going to take over, but it's like it's a no-lose situation for them. I mean, they suck. They were 7 Only 10. on Sports Grid. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! That's what champions do. Welcome into Pro Football Today, and it is time for the post-game show. Myself, Casey Hudson, hanging out with Tom Vecchio. And things got exciting. I would say that uh, Joe Lisi wasn't too far off by saying fireworks, at least way before the game. We saw some fireworks finally popping in that fourth quarter. But before we run down through everything, you're still awake, Tom. I'm still awake, and we got to run everybody through what we saw in this game. So how did that second half wrap up for you? really, really awesome. And, you know, overall great start to the season. Um, you know, kind of like I said, like we kind of hit stride in the second half. They, they ironed out some of the, the issues. Um, everything started to get, ro get rolling. So the quarterbacks kind of do their thing. Um, exciting end to the game. You know, I was on the Ravens at plus three. So not a win there, but, you know, cashing on some other things. I think it's a, a great start to the season. I, I'm not going to overreact to things in terms of, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey not having the biggest games. Maybe it's Derrick Henry, whatever it is. We can get into all this, but let's just say let's not overreact to anything. Let's take this as a piece of the puzzle for these teams, and we'll go forward now just for this game, for the game tomorrow, and then the rest of the games on Sunday. Absolutely, and I think that you probably have the most major key advice at this hour of the night. Do not overreact because when you start looking at the numbers – if you're me, you want to slightly overreact because half of the game I'm sitting here screaming for Derrick Henry because I had such high hopes for a number of things. You did warn me when the game first started probably not to look at certain angles, but it's fine because I wasn't expecting the guy to barely touch the ball in the second half whatsoever. But as we dive into everything that you just mentioned, Tom, just to run this by football fans that watched the game in entirety, you've got Lamar Jackson ending up with 273 passing yards, Patrick Mahomes with 291. That's the only place that I really cashed in. I got that over 450 combined. Other than that, a little bit of sloping hills for me, but it's Lamar Jackson that showed off on the ground tonight, 122 rushing yards. Pacheco only coming up with 45 rushing yards. Isaiah likely with a tremendous game. We saw this guy look like an actual wide receiver in some angles, but a massive tight end that came through for his team. First quarter, two tutties between Derrick Henry and Xavier Worthy. Second quarter was that whole kickoff competition. Third quarter, lone touchdown by Isaiah Pacheco for Kansas City. And then we saw fourth quarter pop off. We saw the Ravens try to rally in there. I want to start by talking about Xavier Worthy. 
cashed in on an anytime touchdown for a number of people. But most importantly, there was 13 to 1 odds on him having two plus teddies tonight. He finds the end zone twice. Is this a great rookie start or what? Yeah, it has to be. Uh, two plus touchdowns, obviously, I would say exceeding expectations. But, you know, more importantly, they got him involved early. I think this is an encouraging sign, especially when there's still no Hollywood Brown for however many games that's going to be. But I, I'm envisioning Worthy. We know he's a ton of speed. So, like, I'm envisioning him playing somewhat of a Debo Samuel role where they, they want to manufacture touches for him. And it may not always be traditional routes. And, you know, what we see with Debo Samuel are bubble screens and jet sweeps. Uh, sometimes he lines up in the backfield. Maybe that's something that happens with Worthy as the season develops. We know that Andy Reid is a very creative and fantastic play caller. So when we're looking to Worthy, I think the spot going forward may be combined rushing plus receiving props if we see those get offered. Because if they're going to use him coming out of the backfield and it's going to be for a, a 10-yard carry, a 20-yard carry, he doesn't need to have 70 receiving yards. He could have 40 receiving yards and 20 out of the ground. And all of a sudden, we're looking at a, a very viable um, asset that we can use on a weekly basis in terms of betting lines. Yeah, absolutely. And you make a great point to mention Hollywood Brown. How scary can this offense actually be? Because if you think about it, it wasn't the sexiest performance by the Chiefs tonight. They missed some opportunities. We saw some pressure put on Mahomes. We saw some miscues, some missed situations. But you still come out with 27 points in a rookie that just went and had himself a day. Right. And, you know, they, they kind of discussed it during the broadcast of, you know, when we see we have a fast receiver going down the sidelines and we have Rice coming out, uh, you know, across the middle. That opens up space for Travis Kelsey. And, you know, he wasn't used a, a ton. But now we had Hollywood Brown into the mix, uh, a receiver I know can, you know, get downfield. I mean, this might be the most exciting time that the Chiefs have had since Tyree Kill. And I think just being able to utilize all those assets between Mahomes and Andy Reid in terms of the play calling and the diversity of the play calls. Some some games for the Chiefs were going to be wrong just because it's not a Travis Kelsey game. It's not going to be a Hollywood Brown game because Pacheco, Worthy, and Bryce are doing anything. That's going to happen for a Chiefs offense that has so many dynamic options, but it's absolutely exciting to watch. Yeah, and I think that a number of you guys earlier between, you know, Kevin, Joe, and Donnie, yourself, Adam, and Dave mentioned, you know, there's a lot more weapons on this roster. They didn't have an opportunity to really be um, a, a, a versatile machine last year. You just have Patrick Mahomes who can make things happen. But now you've got Xavier Worthy, you've got Pacheco, you've got Travis Kelsey, you've got different guys that you can use at different moments. So as you said in the beginning, do not overreact because Travis Kelsey may have not opened up week one with 70 plus yards and a tutty, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to see a big year out of Travis Kelsey to add to what Tom has mentioned too, in terms of looking out throughout this season for rush and receiving combinations, Xavier worthy closed out the night with 21 rushing yards and 47 receiving yards. That's tremendous for a rookie to come into the mix with. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, as I mentioned, 291 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception, which was crucial. We see Carson Steele get in the mix um, for a little bit. I think he had three to five rushing yards. Defense. Let's talk about the defense on both of these sides for a second, starting with the Chiefs. You saw, obviously, what they can do, how gritty they are in their defensive line. And then their secondary kind of coming in strong in a number of ways. McDuffie, I thought he was going to get kind of roughed up in that first quarter, ends up coming back in and being a difference maker in the secondary. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious as as to what we're going to see with the new offensive line lineup penalty that they were calling, especially early in the game. Mm -hmm. Does that provide a bit of a boost for some pass rushers? I think that is something to, to pay attention to. I will say that the Ravens defense does deserve a little bit of credit here, especially you know in that first half, uh, holding them to field goals was huge. Now they weren't able to capitalize on that, but. You know, the dynamic uh, aspect that Roquan Smith can bring, I want to say it was on full effect tonight. Yes. And if they can bring that on a weekly basis, it's the first game of the season, they're playing a great team, we know all these things. But this is still going to be a team that's going to be there in the final four or so when it comes to the AFC. So again, I'm not worried overall. They still have a great defense. They need to iron things out on offense. They need to bring someone else alongside Flowers and Likely to catch the ball. And whether it's going to be Mark Andrews, whether it's going to be Rashad Bateman, they need to figure that out because they need someone else out there alongside those guys providing something in the offense. 
Yeah, and I couldn't agree more in terms of where they can still end up because you saw secondary have big shutdowns when it came to the red zone, especially within um, inside of the 10-yard line. I do want to pick your brain, though, as we start winding down, getting close to a break. We'll continue the conversation on the other side. But you've got, when you're looking at the Super Bowl odds, you've got the Ravens that were only sitting two slots behind the Chiefs. And you come up short, losing 27 to 20 on a night where, you know, you kind of showed some hope, but you didn't really put your best out there. So how would you kind of gauge this in terms of not overreacting to the market? The, the conversation around the, uh, around the Ravens losing to the Chiefs is going to be the same thing that we saw in the playoffs. It's going to be the same thing that we've kind of seen over the past few years. It's like, oh, surprise, surprise. They didn't get it done yet again. They had a chance to you know, exercise these demons and beat this rival that they've failed to beat however many times, and they've failed to do it. So for me, the Ravens' Super Bowl odds are not the spot that I would want to look just because I just don't think there's enough value there at sitting at 12th one that I'm seeing now. Um, I think we look to other teams in the AFC. I think we look to other teams to win the AFC. I think everything's going to be fine ultimately with the Ravens, but it's good. we're going to have the same conversation where they just need to prove it. Like enough of this talk of like, oh, they end up with 11 wins, they end up with 12 wins. Prove it in the playoffs. That's the only thing that matters. Yes, and some the guys I think kind of touched on this earlier. There are a few teams that they really are going to have to work hard to get past, but we get into more of the maybe Super Bowl odds, maybe some teams that you should continue to gauge, maybe some teams you shouldn't react on, but then we also got to talk about where this team may sit when it comes to the AFC. So you don't want to go anywhere. You want to continue to hang out with me and Tom Vecchio here on Pro Football Today on Sports Grid TV. We got a quick break, so stick with us. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Try and set the stage for what should be a great year of NFL action. There's a handful of teams that potentially can compete for a Super Bowl championship. Confusion and uncertainty this year more than some in the past. This team looks like it's ready to make a move, but we just don't know if it's bad or good this year. J.J. McCarthy is eventually going to take over, but it's like it's a no-lose situation for them. I mean, they suck. They were 7 and Only 10. on Sports Grid. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! That's what champions do. You are watching Pro Football Today post game here on Sports Grid TV. Casey Hudson hanging out with Tom Vecchio as we run through the win for the Chiefs 27 to 20 versus the Ravens that really tried to come back with a fourth quarter rally. We saw some exciting things in the fourth quarter. We saw some glimmers of hope. We found a pulse for some of these players. But, Tom, we got to take things head to head for a minute. We got to see what the end result was starting in the quarterback room. I mentioned that one bet did not fail me tonight. <laughs> 
And that was the combined over passing yards of 450, closing out the night with 564 combined between the two top QBs in the league. Now, you've got Lamar Jackson coming in hot at 273 passing yards, one touchdown, and don't forget his ground game with 122 yards contributed there. Then you got Patrick Mahomes at 291 passing yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Kind of break down what you saw between these guys performance-wise because you got the MVP versus the reigning Super Bowl champion. Yeah, all good stuff, I would say, you know, for the most part. Um, Lamar hit the over on both his passing prop and then his passing plus rushing, which I mentioned in the pregame. Um, Mahomes hit the over on his passing yards prop. He did not hit the over on his passing attempts prop, which I spoke about. Um, granted, they were pretty effective on the ground at times. They got the turnover, wasn't the longest field. It happens, but I'm still going to be confident in Mahomes and the offense going forward. I think that's something we can certainly look. Uh, they both ended with just the one passing touchdown. So they both hit the under on their passing uh, touchdowns. Not going to be worried about that when it comes to uh, specifically Mahomes. He's, there's going to have games where he's going to have three or four touchdowns. The Lamar touchdown passing prop, not just tonight, but really throughout the course of his career, is something I've always struggled with because I often see the Ravens game plan as he can get one in the air and then he gets one in the ground. Now we add in Derrick Henry, who I think will be effective this season, especially once they're in the red zone. And it's simply going to steal touchdown passing touchdowns away from Lamar. So on a week to week basis, I think it's more matchup based on how I look at Lamar's uh, passing props. But I, I, again, the passing plus rushing prop is still the best way to go with Lamar. Yeah. And just to kind of like add to that, I found a lot of value and consistency in doing that with Josh Allen over the past couple of years. You know, sure. a guy who has a, a, a solid arm on him, but obviously racks up when it comes to speed. I mean, he was sitting at a minimum of 50 plus rushing yards. Her game just about so a worthy engagement to look at especially as they try to find their rhythm going throughout the season and then we know that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to continue to load up on the pass attack um, because you can use Pacheco in a number of ways and now you've got a number of weapons which takes us into some of the rush kings for the night you got Isaiah Pacheco sitting at the top for the Chiefs with 45 rushing yards, 15 carries, and one tutty. And then, if I haven't said this a number of times already in this post-game show, Lamar Jackson sitting at the top for the Ravens when it comes to the rushing yards with 122. Right below him, Derrick Henry at 46 rushing yards. You said not to overreact. I'm trying so hard not to, Tom, but talk us through the head-to-head -head matchup between the Rush Kings. Yeah, for Henry, I, I think this is more of a game script Um situation where yeah he didn't have a ton of yards he didn't have the touches that i anticipated him having but the game script kind of got away from the ravens where they were playing from behind and that means henry's not going to be out there and granted it's just a one game sample size he is with a new team it, it might be a little bit different if he was with the same team but justice hill has been with the ravens we know that Hargrove likes to use him in third down and passing situations so if this is going to be the trend we have to look at henry under receiving, under receptions, whatever it might be. And then as the game script allows it, that's where we can look to him for, uh, I would say, consistent rushing attempts. We didn't get it tonight, but I still think we'll be there. Justice Hill, I think, is going to be could, could be one of the key options in the Ravens' uh, passing game. He will see some carries out of the backfield, not a whole volume of that. For Pacheco, he's always going to see the ball for the Ravens, uh, excuse me, for the Chiefs. He did so against the Ravens tonight. I'm not really worried about anyone taking carries from him. Will we see some Ajay P. Ryan in there in terms of receptions for the Chiefs? Yes, they brought him in very recently. I think that's going to be another sneaky part of the Chiefs offense, just another piece of the puzzle that they can draw plays for. So Pacheco tonight did his thing totally fine. He's going to find the end zone X amount of times per year. They're probably not going to be very valuable bets, but he'll probably get there more often than not this season. Yeah, and that's just going to continue to contribute to the versatility that is the Kansas City Chiefs. Now for the re receiving category. I mean, first of all, if there's nothing else to appreciate about a game that was, you know, sub, it was entertaining, but it wasn't either of these teams' best. But I will say, watching the passes between Patrick Mahomes and Rasheed Rice was just beautiful because Patrick Mahomes, if he's not great at almost everything, he's – crucially great at those tight coverage passes and I mean the way that he found Rice in some of those tight coverages the ability that Rice has to kind of keep his feet moving and steer towards the end zone 
that's something to give you to look forward to when it comes to the Chiefs in this offense. Rasheed Rice leads the Chiefs in this game with 103 receiving yards, where it was the tight end for the Ravens, Isaiah Likely, an unlikely pick to sit at the top of the charts for this one. But we'll get into the tight ends after we talk about the wide receiving matchup. Yeah, awesome game from Rice to start the season. I think he will be the number one target share player for the Chiefs this season. I, I will have him ahead of Travis Kelsey. Again, kind of what I mentioned in the pregame show where it's not saying that Kelsey's going to have a bad year. I just think that he doesn't have to do as much this year. So we get Hollywood Brown back for the Chiefs. I still think we're going to see Rice as the number one target option for them. And then on a week-to-week basis, it may be some other players. I think we should continue to look to Rice. Uh, uh, every single week. I think the reception total, the yardage total, the TD props are going to be in play every single week for that. We can look at the other players as it goes on. Zay Flowers, I spoke about him at halftime, over 66 live yards. When he had the first half, he ended with 37. He ends the game with 37 and just is completely disappeared in the second half. Obviously, that's due to likely. That's not necessarily his own fault, but I'm still high on Zay Flowers overall, although we lost the halftime bet. Yeah, you're telling me I had that first quarter just over five and a half receiving yards and he comes out the break with these rushing yards. Look, I, I'm excited for the guy, but it didn't work in favor for me. Now, I will also say this. I love that you pointed out the receptions because with those wide receivers that you can count on to get those big yardages, receptions is a crucial, crucial point to kind of look at when you're gauging the market and trying to look at your best bets because sometimes they try these guys and they just want them to hit over five and a half receptions. Rasheed Rice comes out with seven receptions tonight for the 103 yards. But Tom and I got a few more things to get into for this post-game show. So stick with us here on Pro Football Today, post-game here on Sports Grid TV. Don't go anywhere. We have a quick break. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Try and set the stage for what should be a great year of NFL action. There's a handful of teams that potentially can compete for a Super Bowl championship. Confusion and uncertainty this year more than some in the past. This team looks like it's ready to make a move, but we just don't know if it's bad or good this year. J.J. McCarthy is eventually going to take over, but it's like it's a no-lose situation for them. I mean, they suck. They were 7 Only ten. on Sports Grid. Let's go. Welcome to the Live Golf Team Championship. The golf has been mesmerizing. They are the Live Golf Team Champions. Team Golf is back. Oh, yes! Are you ready? Let's go! That's what champions do. One more round to roll with here on Pro Football Today post game show. Casey Hudson hanging out with Tom Vecchio. We were going head to head. We broke down the quarterback room. We got into the running back room or forward back slash running back since it was Lamar Jackson that wrecked it for the Ravens. We talked about the wide receivers, Xavier Worthy and company, but I think we got to talk about the tight ends 
the less than um, exciting action by the tight ends. We already talked about what Travis Kelsey's role may be as they work through having so much weaponry this year, which is fantastic for them. But then you've got Andrews. I heard Kevin and, and Joe and, and Donnie talking about the fact that Andrews did not look like he was fully healthy tonight. So that's something to look forward to. But then you've got Isaiah Likely that looked pretty tremendous before getting a little banged up in the fourth. What did you see between the tight ends? Yeah, the obviously Isaiah Likely is a standout. That hard fall that he had at the back of the end zone there at the very end, he came back in, just want to make sure that he's okay mm -hmm. uh, because obviously playing a dynamic role of their offense. Mark Andrews reports that he was in a, a car crash or whatever it was a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, whatever it was. That's important because if he's actually banged up and now we have Likely who is somewhat banged up, like this poses a, an issue for the Ravens passing offense, which again, I'm going to go back to where it's, they don't have a consistent option. So tight ends for the Ravens are at least a concern right now because of an, in, and a potential injury from Andrews. We don't know about for Kelsey. Again, I think it's a, a fine way to start the season. Everyone was hoping for 60, 70 yards and a touchdown. It is what it is. There will be games that he has 100 yards and a touchdown or he has 60 yards and two touchdowns. I think we don't need to overreact to this if you have him in fantasy. If you bet on him, don't have recency bias whenever they play, wherever it is next week. We'll get into all that. He's going to be fine. So slow game from two of the big name tight ends that we've seen over the past, I don't know, five plus years. Everything's going to be fine. Yes. I'm not overreacting. The only player that I overreacted on was Henry, and we already sorted through that therapeutic issue. But the biggest thing, too, that I'm looking at, if it does come down to two banged-up Raven tight ends, is the fact that when this game opened up and we started to see some, some excitement out of the Ravens' offense, one of them being Lamar Jackson running behind a tight end to gain some yardage and then obviously running behind an offensive lineman. And in order to get that yardage, you've got a tight end with his hand in the dirt and helping coming up in the blocking game. You... you kind of lose an extra blocker if these guys are banged up what's that going to do to Lamar that's a good question because Lamar looked great tonight reports in the offseason that he lost a little bit of weight I, I think he looked tremendous my, my question is every single time if they if opposing teams can eliminate someone like Flowers which they did in the second half who does he pass the ball to if we don't have Andrews or we don't have likely what does the offense look like at that point because they can't run the ball 30 times a game if they're forced into a passing game script so make sure Likely's healthy. Hopefully this level of production we saw from Rashad Bateman can be consistent and he can be that secondary option alongside Flowers. And then it can be a, a rotation between Likely and Andrews, one having a big game and, you know, one playing more of a blocking role, and then the offense will be fine. Yeah, so that's absolutely. really the, the, the overall uh, takeaway. Yeah, and that's crucial because it does go back to what you said about the passing game. And look, Flowers, while he is tremendous, he's sitting at 5'9 and going against certain secondaries. That's not going to really pan out. But before we get out of here for the postgame show, we've got to talk about the showdown in Brazil tomorrow night between the Eagles and the Packers. We've got the Eagles sitting at the top of the NFC East at minus 140. You've got a Packers team that feels a little disrespected in terms of what Jordan Love and company will produce. What are you foreseeing for this matchup? Uh, well, I love the Packers in this in this matchup. I also am very high on the Packers this season. Uh, they gave Jordan Love a bunch of money in the offseason. I think he's surrounded by one of the best young receiving cores in the league. Watson, Reed, Wicks, uh, Luke Musgrave. They brought in uh, uh, Josh Jacobs for the backfield. I think they have an awesome receiving core. And my point about Love is that they didn't pay him all this money to hand the ball off 35 times a game. They gave him this money because they trust him and they wanna they want to push the ball downfield with these great receiving options that they have. So I'm gonna be on the Packers. I'm gonna be on Christian Watson over receiving yards. I will also be on Devontae Smith on the other side for the Eagles over on receiving yards. We've seen slot receivers perform very well uh, in their new offense. So I think we're gonna see a lot of scoring this one, a little bit more consistent than we saw tonight. I love that you're going with the Packers because I think it's going to be crucial, dynamic, and dangerous to have a healthy Christian Watson in the mix. I've been high on this guy since the Senior Bowl. He just hasn't had health on his side. But you know that myself, Tom Vecchio, are going to keep you posted all season long. And we're going to be back here to do it all over again because we got this exciting showdown between the Eagles and the Packers. So you're going to want to stick with us on SportsGrid TV. Follow Tom Vecchio on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. I hope everybody has a fantastic night. That's it from us here on Pro Football Today on SportsGrid.